work in a hospital setting. Um, talk perhaps more about what you see coming, uh, either in the world of education, uh, to try to prepare acupuncturists to be ready for that opportunity as, as, they are, as those opportunities now start to appear. And uh, perhaps, uh, well, share anything actually that you wish uh, with our audience about the, uh, the, the mission of your very uh, interesting institute there. I know you guys are uh, trying to do some cutting edge things there, and uh, how your years of experience that have really allowed you to, to gain the perspective that, that may be necessary for the next generation of people that are ready for that opportunity. Well, uh, <coughs> Getting a master's in science and then go to the get back to school with medicine. Um, and I thought that one of the important things is that we begin constructing the language of education for the acupuncture around the same kind of language and terms that we're using for the educational environment of this business. That uh, when, when both of those disciplines have a, a common language base in their education, then they're just working together and dialogue them uh, on our uh, at some basis of mutual understanding and separate So uh, I'm also serving on a task force developing first professional doctoral standards for this field, uh, for acupuncture and oil medicine. And uh, that was one of the arguments that I was making in terms of, well, the use of certain characterizations like clerkship with the acupuncture and oil medicine will tend to view them as externships to uh, these kinds of things. Uh, developing a common understanding of how educational experiences are created is critical one. That's one. But second, uh, it's absolutely vital that the learners to be able to do acupuncture and oral medicine training programs on having rotations in hospital environments. That, that being there and doing it is the single most important conversation. Now, getting to that point means that they must have uh, a, a basic understanding of biomedical techniques, such that there's a, a common platform of what's available to them, the ability to go into those environments and participate in dialogue to create. And that should not be done in such a way that in any way minimalizes the epistemology of the Chinese medicine. They expect the critical piece the success of the practice. Exactly. And do you think that is the danger, that it will be minimalized from that direction? Or do you think it really the danger is on both sides, that you could end up emphasizing one or the other? Well, well we've seen it. I mean, uh, one hospital uh, setting, the, the charting was uh, admitted that all charting of acupuncture procedures were constructed in biomedical language. Uh, what we see then is that then the practitioners are leaving out the nuance and points of thought that they used to arrive at a clinical intervention. In essence, what, what takes place at that moment is that, uh, one, there's a, a loss of uh, knowledge. Uh, but, but two, also, I think there's a safety issue here. Because the, thinking, the actual thinking process that that individual is used to arrive and their assessment and treatment plan was actually not placed on the record. That's and so the ability to reflect back and point to conclusions about what was effective forms of intervention and what was not is, is hampered by, uh, uh, by what you know, typically considered to be a risk management strategy. Uh, using language that everyone understands in the environment. Yeah, I'd like